me again. And again, this isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is my opinion. You're following me along with my research, my own blog. This is my thoughts. Uh, you are in charge of your own financial advice. With that being said, I have a correction to make from the last video. Uh, instead of division, I did multiplication, and that threw a lot of people off. Um, that was an error. So if you had 1,000 MMTLP shares, that would yield 1,515 oil co. And if you do get a preferred share, you divide 1,000 by 6.6. .6. That would be the convert. Well, or it'd be a tenth. It's either a tenth of the oil co, 10% or 6.6%. .6 it's just how you upstream that multiplier. Uh, you get 151 preferred oil co shares. We may or may not get a preferred oil co share. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so today, I'm going to talk to you about what I was investigating all day yesterday. So at first, I thought this might be a forward triangular merger because of the wholly owned subsidiary. And this sort of fit the bill, tax-free event, wholly owned subsidiary of Meta, and then, you know, oil co. Tax-free event with half the shares, basically half your shares purchased up front. Uh, that's your divvy money. Half your shares are in divvy money. However, um, I want to say that reverse triangular, or this would be a forward triangular merger. There's two types of triangular mergers, reverse and forward. It would be a forward. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make your brains go mush with that. My brain, my brain hurt. My brain hurt. Um tax laws is complex. Yes, grammatically wrong. Tax laws is complex. Uh, so I thought about that first. They seem to match up. Let's go with the other scenario. I think this is more likely, although it's going to look very similar to you. To you, this is going to look similar. And I think you'll be happy with it. Uh, in fact, that's one of the benefits to this is you are much more happier. And it captures maximum value. So on my Twitter, I'm like, which rule do you think? 355 or 368? This is also excluding 358, 352. So 355 refers to spin outs, spin offs. 368 refers, refers to triangular mergers, either forwards or reverse. Um, both are tax-free events if structured properly. I think it is going to be the 355 spinoff. So there's different types of spinoffs. With the documents, we have official documents. And with what Ken said on Sterling's interview, I'll cite Sterling's interview. You can go back to it, link below. Rewatch it. Um, I also did a video where I cite what Ken said. Let's talk about a sponsored spinoff. I think this is going to be a sponsored spinoff. Here, I'll pull it up. This is a great website, although there are some errors. Uh, the first one should read, it gives pre-sponsor, post-sponsor, and in spinoff sponsor. Uh, the first one should be pre, not post. There's two posts. I think this is a pre-spinoff sponsor. Um. So, the target in this, we are the parent, Oil Co. is the parent, we are the parent shareholders, okay? Target is where you want to go. We're going to next bridge. And who's going to finance this? Who's going who's gonna to pay us money for our, our shares and do all this stuff? But I, I want to stick with EIG. It could be any financier... I know EIG is into this, and they have the money for it. So, EIG. Um, what does this mean for us, right? Brass tax. Basically, EIG comes in, sponsors it. They buy out half of your shares. 
49.9% of the value. Um, and then we become next bridge. I'll pull up the site here so we can talk about the benefits. There are many benefits to uh, this spin out. It's VC financed. You know, you have an investor come in. It captures 100% of the enterprise value as a premium valuation. Maximum value. Don't we want maximum value? Here we go. No tax leakage. There's no corporate tax. And if you live in U.S., no federal tax. Uh, state tax is dependent on where you live. Substantial upfront proceeds enhanced beyond typical upstream dividend. Substantial upfront money. Enhance, it's it's beyond a typical dividend. It's it's a special enhanced, you know, they're paying you, you know, maximum value for the company. We know what our maximum value is. I've talked about the maximum value of our assets. Retain significant upside in target for parent shareholders. What does that mean? Okay, that means that <clears throat> once they come in and buy half your shares, the value is going to increase from there. It's going to go up, Right. Because maybe they want more of the company later, and this can be structured as so in about a year from when they started. I don't know when this started. I know Wilco started originally in late August, so if that's one year, you know, we're approaching February here for them to get the rest of the company. But... It basically, they come in, they buy half your shares, and that starts the floor. That's where the floor starts in this, guys. Oil is going to go up in price. It's, it, you know, if tensions keep going with Russia, um, that will affect a lot more because Russia also supplies other countries with oil as well besides Ukraine, like China. Um, that puts more value on our, on our shale oil, guys, our U.S., you know, land, shale oil. <laughs> Um, so that's where the floor starts is the initial come in and then it goes up. Is this going to be a public company? Yes and no. This creates, and if you look at here, um, it creates, they are missing a keyword. So I'm going to add that keyword in. It creates a strategically and financially independent public business entity. They're missing the business word. It provides you dry powder means you get cash for half your dividends. It sets the premium valuation as a floor, meaning what dividend amount you get paid for your shares is the floor. And it goes up from there. Maximum value. Again, this, this whole plays into that, what I found, that 50%. It, it matches up with the official press releases. As to when this starts, I don't know. If it's going to start soon, we'll hear something soon. You know, I was hoping it'd be soon. If not, it'll happen. Uh, these things can take a while. Tax, tax laws are very convoluted. I would rather have them take time for this to be a tax-free event. Us to capture maximum value for our dividend than to be rushed. Because if you make a mistake with something like this... The whole thing becomes taxed and you'll get a letter from the tax man up to like three years from the deal. You can get a tax man letter up to three years. It's it's pretty crazy. But let's continue. Uh, so this it's a stable long-term shareholder under lockup. That's why we're getting half the money up front. Active and experienced board presence. It also talks about the management team can be a board. So the management team sort of lines up with the next bridge and the letter from Meta talking about the management team. Uh, please, like I said, look at this document. I think this is one of the better documents on sponsored spinouts, and I looked at a lot of them. I read lawyers talking about it this one uses like the most plain english and is the most easiest to read without it could, because it puts it in chart form and template form it doesn't like just it's not a wall of text so when next bridge forms what does this mean for you again you get 
half year dividend upfront maximum value. You know your value in the shares will appreciate. It's not a publicly traded company. It's not a publicly traded company. Uh, it's a financially independent public business entity, which is not a publicly traded company, meaning that it can't be shorted. It can't be. There's the good. Who cares if there's a sell? It's not going to be shorted. You know, it's it's irrelevant of that. Your number one competitor is the price of oil, as Berta stated. <clears throat> We're going to be very excited when we hear the management team. When Ken said that, I think that's also when, you know, we're going to hear how much possibly it'll be when we hear how much the first, that first dividend will be. Um, truly, I think this will indeed create an unlimited liability for short sellers who short this because once... Once this goes into, you know, a business, a financially independent business entity that's a not publicly traded company, if this does pay, if you get half your cash, right, they got to pay that to the brokerage uh, that they borrowed shares from. If there is any dividends while we're waiting for the next payout, great. So if the sponsor wants to buy more of the company after a year, they can. Uh, a stipulation is that as long as the whole company isn't transferred over to the sponsor. That's easy enough to do if McCabe keeps his shares because McCabe had 18 million shares. That wouldn't be the whole company. And again, that could be the preferred share amount. I'm not really too sure on how that structure is. I'd have to see the paperwork. That's only a guesstimation. But this sponsored spin out, again, matches that 49% I talked about two days ago. It matches the team, the management team, because the management team, according to this document, can become the, C, the board of the target company, Next Bridge. And it captures maximum value. Maximum value. What is our first 49% of our shares? 49.9%, 50% of our shares. That's the floor. And it goes up from there. And we know how much our assets are valued, guys. And that's what I found. Uh, I'll cite this. I'll cite, you know, here's some complex tax laws about spinouts. Here's another guy talking about spinouts and sponsored spinouts. Look up sponsored spinouts. Now, there's three types. There's pre-spin, post-spin, and during the spinout sponsor. Uh, the third one is the most complex for taxes, the pre and post are the easiest. I think this is going to be a pre-spin sponsor uh, just because things were set up in August with Oilco. That's, you know, and then the next bridge site came out in July. Again, anything that happens to these shares, the, the shorts are on the hook for. That will be really interesting how this plays out. I, I think in terms of Torchlight, it was never about trapping the shorts making them hurt. It was about avoiding the tax man boogeyman, as I said that in my last video. It's about avoiding that tax man. This is a really good way to avoid tax man. It's also a terrific way, you know, to keep the value of the company. It keeps the value of the company. And it creates a floor. And like Ken said, we're going to be excited when we learn who the team is. And we're capturing maximum value. Oil might continue to appreciate. By the way, guys, um, I know there's a lot of FUD saying, well, they hadn't sold the property since, you know, forever. Well, they started selling the property in 2019. Berta stated that their number one competitor in this is the cost of oil. And in other interviews, Berta has talked about this is all based on the price of oil. It's going to be sold on a price per barrel. He cites the Alaska deal and a price per barrel valuation. Uh, if this works out, yeah, your your initial dividend's tax free. Uh, that's great. You know, half your share is tax free and no corporate tax, so that's a higher dividend amount for you. Even if the sale price is a bit lower, it works out because there's no corporate tax. In my previous videos, I always accounted for corporate tax. As well as that sets the floor for the value of the company. 
and it can't be shorted, it can't be taken down anymore. The only thing would take it down would be, you know, price of oil dramatically dips again. Um, oil is the highest it's been since that pre-2014 OPEC agreement. This is the highest it's been. And Torchlight came out during that OPEC agreement. I had a lot of friends lose jobs in the oil field industry. Um, I was very sad. Um, I had a few people stay with me. Actually, they, they were out of a job. And so I'm like, well, you can, I have the room at my place, you know, stay at my place. Here's a lovely post somebody made on Weeble about me. I like how they use my funny picture. That was me making a funny picture. Um, I, if you know me and my personality, I'd rather do funny than sexy. <laughs> One, it doesn't have to, you know, this is business. Um, although who says a business can't be sexy, right? And if you got to flaunt it, but I'd rather do funny. I thought it was a funny picture of me. You know, my eyes are really bad. I got some thick glasses. It makes my eyes look a bit goofy, uh, in pictures. So, I took this funny picture at me at the, at the teal office and posted it so people would know I was at the off. You know, I physically went out on location. I like to do that. I like to investigate and drive around. I'm really hands-on. And <laughs> they made this really awesome post about me. Feel free to read it. Um, by awesome, that's in quotation uh, there's no such thing as bad advertising. What if we tell people don't see the bird lady? Um, I will say he got some things wrong on this. The teacher part is right. Uh, that's great. It's all that heat keeps me warm in the winter. It's only 45 degrees out. So that heat's keeping me warm. Okay, guys. Uh, like I said, if, you know, this is my thoughts. If I get excited about something I post about it my personality that's my personality I don't keep anything from you if I learn something I'm like Wah! you know I get, I get excited about it I'm an enthusiastic person very outgoing I get excited easily uh, if you don't hear anything by Monday okay then look to March but I've been saying this to online if you don't hear anything Monday look to March that was just wild speculation on my part at personally, I cannot function on a sometime soon basis. I'm one of those people who, if they could find out what day they would die, I would I would be like, okay, well, I can plan or I can plan around this event now. If I knew what day I was gonna die, great, I could plan around this event, right? To me, it's not like oh, a lot of people don't like that because then they have this looming date in their head that it's the end, it's terminated. Me, I look at it a little bit differently. I'm like, okay, if I know what date my death is going to be, I can sort of plan around that. I can I can sort of like, okay, I'm young. This is what I want to do now while I'm young. Or maybe I'll die young. So, yikes. <laughs> Just live it up, right? Um, I'd like to plan around that. That's just my personality type. Uh, so... I'm not trying to pump dates on you. Like I said, you're following my thoughts. I like to know, you know, um, dates of things or try to figure out dates of things if I can just on that fact that then I can, I can, I feel I can more maximize my time better if I have specific dates, target dates, I can kind of do things around. Okay, guys, I will see you soon. Goodbye.